Show. Peter sits down with the voice of Ezra, Taylor Gray. And he gets a surprise from the Mandalorian Marks. And much, much more. Now, from the Lucasfilm headquarters, it's the Star Wars Show. Hello, I'm Peter Townley. And I'm Andy Gutierrez. Welcome to the Star Wars Show, a show that, if we play our cards right, could be as big of a resume builder for Chopper as Star Wars Rebels. Seriously, read the credits. 26 and counting on IMDb. Now roll the transition. Before we signed off last week, we asked to see your spooky Star Wars outfits and pumpkins. And as it turns out, Star Wars fans do Halloween right. That they do. Ray and Kylo seem to be a huge draw for cosplayers. But if we're going by pure numbers, according to our non-scientific hashtag submission system, Ahsoka was the clear fan favorite for costumes this year. There was a full-grown Ahsoka, pint-sized Ahsoka, Mandalorian Ahsoka, and an Ahsoka pumpkin. Let's not forget all about the BB-8 pumpkins, Kylo pumpkins, and Inquisitor pumpkins. Oh, but Andy, let's really not forget about what was clearly the best costume this year. What's that? Well, that was Michael Calais, Dave Filoni, and Andy Gutierrez costume. You've arrived, Andy. People are dressing up as you now. Sure have. Achievement unlocked. And Just... speaking of costumes, I learned something very important, too. Now, what's that, Peter? Well, let's say you're not the biggest fan of something, and mm -hmm. you go on YouTube and say that you don't care so much for Boba Fett. What's your favorite bounty hunter? Um, not Boba Fett. I'm really not a Boba Fett fan. I like... What, you don't like Boba Fett? No, he's so overrated. Well, apparently... After that, you will be rewarded with a custom-made costume as an act of revenge? I don't know, right? I don't, that's, that's not how revenge works. No, but that's how it worked this time, when the San Francisco chapter of the Mandalorian Marks, the Wolves of Mandalore, saw the episode of our show and decided that I should be gifted with an absolutely incredible, beautiful, custom-made Mandalorian suit of armor. So, I was invited to a Mandalorian armor party, and then, well, watch what happened. Bounty Hunters. All right, guys, I can barely contain my excitement right now. It is time for me to get fitted for my armor, so I'm about to walk into a Mando Mercs armor party. Let's go. What do we have on the schedule for today? What are we gonna be doing? Well, today we're gonna measure out and do some final fittings of the soft parts, mm -hmm. your jumpsuit and your vest. So we're gonna get this on to you now so okay. we can fit it and I can finish it up. Excited. We've been working for a while now, but we're really excited. We have people here ready to work. We're going to take you outside and we're going to do some shaping of armor. The way we start is we find the right size collar and then measure the plates down and cut down accordingly. Right now we are using the heat guns to heat up the foam core so it can be molded to my body. And as it cools, it hardens and makes an awesome shell. I love seeing this process. I mean, I knew a lot of work went into making these kits, but I never understood the process. <laughs> yeah, that feels good. We have the helmet, and uh, oh this is basically it. It's so cool. Well, I'm like getting really emotional, I'm sorry. Awesome, well, the uh, shaping is completely done. We're ready for prime and paint. I can't wait to see it finished. It was great, we had a blast. <laughs> I'm sitting down with Taylor Gray, the voice of Ezra Bridger on Star Wars Rebels. Taylor, thanks so much for coming on to the show. Dude, thanks for having me. This place is amazing. So we got Star Wars Rebels Season 3 happening now. Are you excited to see how people are reacting to it? Stoked. I mean, that's the most fun part of it all is you make it and then it goes away and it's animated and everything for so long. And then it finally comes out as we're already so far down the line and you see the fans' reactions, and then that's when it all becomes real, and you're like, this is amazing. And they have their theories as to what's going on or There's what's so to come. There's so many theories, There's a too. theory for everything, and them trying to explain every little, like, their hair blows. Why did that happen? You're like, yeah. I didn't even know that was going to happen. <laughs> every, every single choice gets examined with yep. like on a really fine but level. But that's the beautiful thing about Star Wars, and that's yeah. how you get all these tangential storylines where you're like, whoa, how did you get to that? People are invested and, and the characters mean something to everybody, which is so fun. And it's funny, as soon as I start growing my hair out, they chop Ezra's and now he's, <laughs> he's got a little buzz cut. Perfect timing. You were talking about the investment in the characters too, mm -hmm. and that's, that's one of the things that's so great about Rebels. But I think Ezra in particular, because we're getting to watch him kind of grow mm -hmm. up oh, on yeah. the show. It's been amazing to have a character that has been yours that you've developed last this long. Dave Filoni in particular had such a vision and told us what he wanted us to do with the character and then said, it's yours, like make of it what you will. Starting at a younger age, I think Ezra, he's gotten older and 
and grown up and matured, learned how to be a Jedi, which that's one of the cooler character arcs you can ever take. But it's been really cool following this character through the whole journey. How have you grown through working with the cast and crew of Rebels? It's been amazing, and, and there are multiple layers to that. One, Vanessa and Steve, they are veterans of, of voiceover. This is the first voiceover thing I'd ever done. The other side of that is it's been very cool because working with Dave, learning story and everything about Star Wars has been unbelievable. And Freddie, we developed this really close relationship right away. I've now realized part of it was his clairvoyance, whatever you want to call it, that he was like, I need to start perpetuating this relationship now and mm -hmm. doing things as a mentor. Like, do that on your own and let's see what happens. And then I'll tell you why I don't think that worked or why that worked. Yeah. This really cool bond form, this like older brother, pseudo father type of thing, which is exactly what happens in the show. Are there some places that we've seen in Rebels so far in the first couple of seasons where you really grew while you were doing the role? Yep. When we touched on the emotional outcome of what happened with his parents, that was a nice step up into growing the character and also me as an actor feeling like, okay, we've moved to the next step. Also, everything dealing with the dark side and balancing mm. that and the relationship with Maul, the temptation that comes from that. At the end of season two, that was really cool. That was the that was biggest thing. Heavy I'd stuff, say, man. I'd say that was the biggest leap. Taylor, yep. thanks so much for Dude, being on the show. You're the man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming and talking Star Wars. It's so been fun. Cool. So cool. We got more Star Wars show coming up right now. It's finally here. All of that hard work and all that time you guys put into it. It's finally ready to suit up. And I can't even get over how beautiful the box is. I can't wait to see what's inside it. Thank you awesome. guys so much. You're welcome. Let's, let's do this. Up. Let's do it. That has got to be one of the coolest feelings in the world. Thank you guys so much for all of your hard work and time and, and everything, and I'm sorry. So what do you think of Mandalorians now? I have nothing but respect for the culture, and I'm so honored to be wearing this armor. Thank awesome. you so much. All right, everybody, buckets on. Stick around, everyone, so we're showing just a second. Oh, yeah. Hi everyone, Caitlin Marshall here at Lucasfilm's fifth annual Sidewalk Chalk Festival. Artists and employees have come out to draw some of their favorite Star Wars and non-Star Wars characters right here on the sidewalk in front of Lucasfilm. John, what are you looking for here as a judge? I'm looking for the whole picture. I'm looking for creativity, originality, sense of humor, quality of execution. I'm here with this year's winners, Max Dumbo Band. How long did it take you to make this work? We each pitched in about eight to 10 hours or so. We worked pretty much till 1 a.m. one night. Long night. We were here with the raccoons. Do you have anything to admit were maybe the raccoons involved in the creation of the square? I can neither confirm nor deny that. Another great year at the Lucasfilm Sidewalk Chalk Festival. But too bad this one didn't win. Okay, so let me get this straight. If I want something that's incredibly awesome, all I have to do is come on this show and say it's overrated. Yeah, pretty much, I guess. Well, in that case, I think now would be a good time to state publicly that the thing I think is most overrated is new cars and suitcases full of unmarked small bills. I don't think the people who can provide that for you are watching the show right now. No, you never know. Oh, yeah. You know what else is overrated? Endless vacations and sprawling mansions. Good luck with that one, Peter. Thanks. And be sure to check out the Star Wars After Show presented by Verizon, where I gather a panel of Lucasfilm employees to break down all the happenings in this week's episode of the Star Wars Show. Watch it this Thursday and every Thursday only on YouTube.com slash Verizon. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Oh, you know what I also think is overrated? Huh. Custom double-bladed lightsabers. Oh, really? The worst. Yeah.